Well, greetings, everyone. It's good to gather with you again. We're a little bit late uh, this week with this midweek uh, message, but hopefully it fits well into the better late than never category. Uh, we've been working through a series of the most frequently asked questions about Christianity. Um, maybe we could even just say the most frequently asked questions about God. And we've started off with the question about suffering. Why is there suffering in the world? Especially why is there so much suffering if God is all powerful and all loving, which we as Christians do claim? Good question. Why is there so much suffering, not only at the personal level, but at the community-wide level, at the worldwide level? In previous videos, back on July 1st, we touched on the aspect of that that is uh, very important, and that is the aspect of human freedom and why there is suffering. Uh, we also, in subsequent video, talked about how God works through suffering. And then the third video was about how God moves through our prayers. Uh, that actually suffering will draw us to a posture of prayer when otherwise we may not uh, choose to pray. And today I want to touch on the aspect that God is involved with us in our suffering. Uh, Maybe a concept that's a little bit hard to understand, uh, but there's ample evidence that this is very, very true. You know, when we deal with this question, why is there suffering, it's not uh, an easy, uh, just textbook question to answer. No easy answer to why is there suffering. But we do know, as one part of the answer, is that God has entered uh, into our suffering. He has entered fully into the human experience. He had to. If God was going to redeem us from everything that separates us from him, then he has to experience in some way, some level, everything that does separate us from him, and that includes suffering. And he has engaged himself, he has entered into um, what could be perhaps described, many people have described it as the most extreme form uh, of suffering. John Stott, a noted Anglican theologian, a former uh, chaplain to the Queen of England, passed away a number of years ago, uh, is credited with saying, I could never myself believe in God if it were not for the cross. For it's when Jesus went to the cross that he entered into the most extreme form of suffering. And he did it voluntarily, and he did it for you and me. Tertullian one of the early Christian fathers back in the early centuries of the New Testament church described God as the crucified God. Uh, that was something that was just unheard of and in many uh, philosophies and theologies of different ways of understanding God as we may come up with our own in our, in our own understanding that's just unheard of that God would allow himself to be crucified. Paul writes in his second letter to the church in Corinth, the fifth chapter and verse 19, he writes that in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. That means not only that God used the ministry of Jesus, he did use the ministry of Jesus to reconcile the world to himself, but God the Father himself was in the person of Jesus, his Son, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the Godhead, the fullness of the Trinity experienced uh, the crucifixion uh, experience a as well. That's part of what it means that in Christ God was reconciling the world uh, to himself. Isaiah, centuries and centuries before Jesus showed up on the scene, uh, was, is quoted in the 53rd chapter, the third verse, the New International Version saying, in describing the coming Messiah who we know to be Jesus, Described him as a man of suffering and familiar with pain. He is with us, with, with us when we are suffering. With us always, but most particularly. Um, C.S. Lewis has something, see if I can remember us. Uh, he, he's with us in our everyday life. Um, he talks to us, uh, maybe through, his, through the Bible. Uh, but the part that uh, this quote, I'm, I'm pretty sure it gets right, he shouts to us in our pain. 
Paul Little, uh, in his book, Know Why You Believe, says that no pain or suffering have ever come to us that has not first passed through the hand and the heart of God. He has experienced the suffering uh, in, in some degree and the heartache uh, that we experience as well. So God is not aloof to our suffering. And he, in his wisdom, is, we accept by faith, he is accomplishing something for our good, though even though he allows us to experience uh, this level of suffering. We're currently in a series on our Sunday morning service at the Solid Rock Church, going through some of Paul's letter to the Romans. Uh, we've touched on Romans 6 and Romans 7, and this coming Sunday, uh, we're going to begin through Romans 8. Uh, not going to cover the whole chapter, but part of that chapter, Romans 8, 28, a, a verse that's familiar to many of us, uh, reads, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his good purpose. All things. That includes the suffering. So we may not understand why. We may not understand how. But we know God is with us in our suffering. So are you going through a time of suffering right now? And you're wondering, maybe the... the question has come off of your lips, why God? Where are you God? Well, next week I, I hope to touch on the aspect of how do we respond to the suffering that we may experience. We all do to different degrees, different types of suffering, and so how do we respond? Uh, I hope you'll come back and, and join me next week for my thoughts on that. But now, let me pray for you again. What about uh, for those of you who maybe are experiencing suffering because you're in need of healing? Uh, maybe it's from the COVID-19. Uh, maybe it's something else. Uh, maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's healing from the pain of a broken relationship. Uh, maybe it's some other type of healing. Healing because, uh, well, you, you're in need of employment. Uh, you know, God uses the healing, excuse me, uses the suffering. And for those whom he knows, he'll use it for not only your good, but also for his glory. We may have to wait quite a while to understand that, to see that. But for those who, you do, who do not know God yet, through the work of Jesus, his son on the cross, um, he may be calling you at this time of suffering, calling you to come to him. I bid you come. I implore you come. Come to Jesus and receive him as your Savior and as your Lord. Uh, for your eternity hangs in the balance. Uh, I've touched on that in, in previous videos. Not in this series about why suffering, but go back to the uh, videos uh, prior to the, the videos that we've done in the month of July. But come to him. He loves you. He calls you. It may be in, through your pain that he's calling you to come to him because he loves you. So I implore you, uh, pray a prayer of commitment. You don't have to be pretentious or anything. You don't have to be uh, really exquisite with the way that you articulate it. But just pour out your heart to him. Jesus, I'm suffering. Come. One of my favorite verses, I share it often, Matthew 11:28. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Other translations may say, I will refresh you. If you don't know Jesus, come to him. If you don't know how, just ask him. Just pray a prayer. Lord, I come to you. Teach me. Reveal yourself to me. Show me yourself. Show me how to come to you. If you're not involved with the church, that's one thing I might encourage you to do. Get involved with a local church congregation. Uh, that's one of the first things I did, I was doing when I came to Jesus many, many years ago. It just seemed logical. It seemed a practical step. So find a church that teaches the Bible in its proper context. Um, study what they believe. But get involved with a, with a local congregation and, and you will grow. 
Let me pray for you. And don't forget, before I pray, uh, remember after we're done, to, if you haven't already done so, click the subscribe button and the bell icon. You'll get notifications. Let's pray. Father God, we, we do come to you and we need help understanding about why there's so much suffering in the world and why you allow it. And help us to understand how we should respond when we're in the midst of suffering. Give us eyes to see you, Lord Christ. For those who are suffering with some sort of mental, uh, physical, emotional uh, illness, uh, malady, come Holy Spirit and bring comfort, bring healing, bring wholeness. Uh, reveal yourself to those folks. For those, again, who are uh, in uh, a struggle because of employment, and it may be because of, again, this COVID-19, uh, maybe other reasons, but Father, you've said as we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness that you will provide for us. Another one of my favorite verses, one of the favorite promises God has made to his people in Matthew 6, 33. Uh, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Uh, things that are talking about food and clothing, the necessities of life, shelter, that sort of thing. Seek first the kingdom of God. So come Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to everyone who watches this video at the point of their greatest need, whether they perceive that to be an insurmountable need or even a, a rather minor need. Now meet them, reveal yourself, share yourself, encourage them, comfort them, protect them. All for your glory, Lord Christ. We ask it all in your name. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Hope to be with you again next week, people. God bless you. Don't forget, click the subscribe and the bell icon. God bless you. Have a great week.